Sometimes in life we just have to accept that others know best <laughs> or think they know best. But when they have a reason to be right, we have to acknowledge and address that and take it for what it is. So welcome to this video, this episode of Blooms For You. Cousin It in the last episode had a problem with me showing him from what I thought was his best side because of the bloom count. Turns out he prefers the darker side of him where there's not so much light and his leaves are a little bit more green. And today I will have to agree with him even though the bloom count is much, much more excessive where he has had more light. But the leaves, they are fading rather quickly due to age and due to more light kind of out with the old and soon in with the new. So I have obliged him. I've humored him. This is Cousin It, my Maxillaria variabilis, my sidekick, because when he is in bloom, I get to dedicate a whole bunch of blooms to everybody that watches this video who is not mentioned in the dedications and the thank yous today. It has been a struggle the past four weeks, I cannot tell you. So I am celebrating every single bloom that opened for me because that means I get to say thank you personally to the next name on the list. So let's go have a look-see what managed to bloom out and whose name came up. If you would like to join me, I would very much appreciate it. Lelawati Shamsudin, Yisaleo Chano, Yep Nguyen, Joseph Wong, Superfita, Dopest Ethiopian, Drama Archives, Victoria Bakvalova, Amitava Chandra, Rock Doc 2174, Angelus, Copra Krishna Abey, Janet Lin, Paula Milano, Rumor on Grek, Aquila Family, and Blood Wolf. I always love it when an orchid comes through with plenty, plenty of blooms so that I can go through my blooms for you list to say thank you to as many people as possible. It puts a dent into that list and I love it because that means other names are now coming up a little bit faster. Unfortunately, I only have one Cymbidium that does that for me because as you can see, she gets rather big and I only have limited amount of space on my patio. Not because they can't live outside all year round, but because when it comes to the summer, there is far too much exposure on my patio. I cannot protect them and keep them looking beautiful and stop the leaves from burning. That is why I have limited myself to only one Cymbidium, but this Cymbidium is called Beach Balls, which is a made up name, of course, but just because the buds, when they're close to opening, they have sort of a beach ball vibe. Needless to say, I want to thank everybody on this list, Lela Wati, Shamsuddin, Isaleo Channel, Yep Nguyen, Joseph Wong, Superfita, Dopest Ethiopian, Drama Archives, Victoria Bakvalova, Amitabha Chandra, Rock Doc 2174, Angelus, Kupra Krishna Abey, Janet Lee, Paula Milano, Ruma Angrek, Akila Family, and Blood Wolf for your support on my channel via my Cymbidium Beach Balls. And I really hope that if you see this video that you like the blooms. Personally, I absolutely adore them. Unfortunately, right now, it is very, very chilly. It's drizzling on and off. So I do come out every once in a while to protect the blooms from too much water and to sort of, you know, tap them gently to shake off any water. They look so pretty with water droplets on them. I have to say there's something whimsical and magical about them when they have the water droplets on them. But being so cold and not as breezy to match the humidity in the air, I am kind of concerned that these blooms would otherwise get botrytis and I would like to avoid that as best as possible. Especially seeing as this year, fortunately it is cold because I don't have the ants all over her bringing in the aphids. So, you know, yin and yang. <laughs> I have the water to watch out for, botrytis to be careful of, but I don't have the ants. So things have a way of working themselves out. In case I do not manage to protect the blooms from all this botrytis nonsense, I did want to film even though the third spike over there, it is a little bit premature. That bud is still yet to open. 
but who knows in 24 hours whether all that changes and suddenly I have blemishes on my blooms. Now because the list is so long I am not going to mention every single name again but I will run it through one more time just to make sure that if you watch this video that you see your name and you know that you've been recognized and you know how much I appreciate your support here on my channel. Thank you so very very much and I hope that all of you are doing well in your part of the world. It took me a little while to get this orchid to be somewhat presentable, that the blooms were clean and free of pests to the best of my ability. And how do you do that when blooms are spotted, speckled, hairy, they have all these little protrusions like little warts, and then you should find microscopic aphids. Well, my little trick is to get up there and pretend I'm taking a picture and all of a sudden, the truth is revealed that the things I cannot see with my naked eye, my camera picks up. Now watch. I will feel as though I've done a great job and when it comes to uploading the images onto an even bigger screen, I'll probably have a microscopic aphid staring at me. So I do apologize to Adita's Garden, Michelle Carini, J-Dog, and Hyun Nguyen Tai. If you see any aphids on these blooms of my Dendrobium lutein blanc that I want to dedicate to the four of you to say thank you for your support on my channel, I apologize for that right now. It is a nightmare to get at these little things, especially because the blooms have so much texture and with all the spotting, it's very difficult to identify, are you a wart, are you a spot, or do you move? So, I hope I've got the blooms as clean as possible. She is a first-time bloomer, I think she's lovely anyway, and well worthy of dedicating to Aditya's garden, Michelle Carini, J-Dog, and Hung Nguyen Tai. And I hope that you agree with me. I have another little cluster of blooms down here. These are the most perfect of them all. Even though I've got more opening up here, I keep seeing spots there, but now I'm wondering if I'm imagining things because I'm like, you know, paranoid. Are you a spot? Are you an aphid? I did lose a spike, unfortunately, because I saw aphids early on and I was a little bit of a ninja with my garlic alcohol, so I burned a spike. But all in all, for a first time blooming, I am pretty impressed and I do love her so much. I just love how interesting these blooms are from all angles, even not just from the top, the bottom, but even the sides, the spikes also have markings and everything. Super interesting. So far, I have managed to hold on to the blooms, even though I'm touching them on the daily. It's been about two weeks. And on a cloudy day like this, unfortunately, I do not have that burnt, honey, sugary, molasses kind of fragrance from her. But never mind, we've got blooms. What more can we ask for? So thank you very much, Adieta's Garden, Michelle Carini, J-Dog, and Hung Nguyen Tai. I really appreciate your support on my channel and my Dendrobium Lutein Blanc. She blooms for you. Oh, and forgive me if you see any aphids in the next image. Before I get into the details about this cute little tulumnia that has just opened up for me, I would like to say thank you to Amol Rao and Hawaiian Magic Mechanic for your support on my channel. And the reason I just opened up with before I get into all of this, I have two spikes, as you can see, one is in the background there, but this is supposedly tulumnia snow white. I say that somewhat hesitantly because, you know, tulumnias Mine are probably most of them mislabeled, but anyway, that was what was on her tag. And you can see that this spike has only just opened with three blooms. And yes, it might appear that I am filming her prematurely, but I want to show you something here, because this is actually a really, really cute little thing that's going on. The older bloom here has a lot more pink on the lip than the latest bloom that has just opened. And the awkwardness of filming Tulumnia spikes is because we need to turn them around and get other blooms into focus again. So here we go. So that would be the third bloom on the spike. In a kind of a transition between the darker pink of this bloom right here 
the white of the freshly opened bloom and it's transitioning and darkening, changing a little bit of color. So the second spike, same thing, but already a lot maturer. So let's have a look at that. There we go. <laughs> Everybody is pink now and really, really pink. Quite, quite amazing. So if this is a snow white, then I would say, yep, that fits. We like to change our clothes a lot as women. <laughs> nah, this skirt won't do for me today. I'm gonna wear this skirt. I, actually, you know what? I've changed my mind and now I'm gonna wear this skirt, whereas this morning I wore that skirt. All a little bit of a mess here with the tulumnias, but a cute mess. So I'm hoping Amor Rao and Hawaiian Magic Mechanic that you like tulumnias because these two spikes, they bloom for you to say thank you once again for your support on my channel and it's all a little bit of a quirky thing going on. These blooms here have now been open almost eight to ten days and these blooms are just about opening. I was going to actually film this clip separately because I wasn't expecting this spike to open so quickly. Isn't that cute though? I wonder if I can push them together and get them in focus doesn't really work does it but you see what I mean same orchid and this little bloom here is a color changer a cute one supposedly Tolumnia gyrac firm snow white whatever it is she is cute beautiful and she blooms for you Amor Rao and Hawaiian magic mechanic thank you for your support on my channel Kathleen Santos, I've got Sergio Ara, Yokosuka Story, the second growth, that little bud, it's opened and this bloom blooms for you to say thank you to you for your support on my channel. So the first time I featured this orchid and we were talking about the name Sergio Ara, I'm going to put it into this clip here for you, Kathleen Santos, because Sergio, <laughs> same spelling, very Spanish, Sergio is of course a Spanish name, Sergio, spelled Sergio, with the G, J. <laughs> now, so what do you think if I should provoke the orchid world and call it Sergioara, Yokosuka story? Would that get me a lot of pushback? Just a thought, you know? <laughs> Sergio, Sergio, I know, I know, maybe you get my point. I actually quite like the ring of Sergio Ara. It makes it more authentic, I feel. When you say Sergio Ara, it sort of gets lost in pronunciation. Sergio Ara is so much more, mm, I like it. Anyway, Kathleen Santos. I can now consider my Sergio Ara Yokosuka story in full bloom because the other blooms are still around looking fresh and looking divine. But here we are with this bloom back here on my second growth. She blooms for you. Thank you so much for your support on my channel, Kathleen Santos. I hope everything is going well in your part of the world. And just because I'm in the mood, Sergio Ara, Yokosuka story, she blooms for you. Ana Mauro and Kara Lockwood, I'm going to tell you a story. And anybody else that is willing to listen <laughs> throughout this clip and dedication. First of all, the two of you, thank you so much for your support, Ana Mauro and Kara Lockwood, here on my channel. I so appreciate it. Now, let's get to the story about Tolumnias. Once upon a time, I bought 19 Tolumnias in one batch. They were all labeled, and according to the labels, I tagged them and put them into my little baskets with lava rock. Then, once upon a time, I lost a few of them back to back. And then, once upon a time, a few of them started blooming completely different from what the label said. I resorted to the fact that I had a box of chocolate, and in true Forrest Gump fashion, when a Tolumnia blooms, you never know what you're gonna get, just like with a box of chocolates. <laughs> now, once upon a time, I had a Tolumnia bloom out and she was 
gorgeous and red and I was so, so happy that my red devil was still alive because I knew I had a red devil. I had an itsy bitsy little part of a bloom when she arrived and I was just so happy. Then another Tulumnia opened up and she was redder than the previous one. So I'm like, nope, the previous one, I got it wrong. This second one is my red devil. Happy days, I've still got my red devil. And she bloomed two spikes. I was excited. And here is one that had absolutely no label on its basket because I was close to just ditching all the labels, considering that all my Tulumnias were wrongly labeled anyway, what's the point? So I didn't know what I had in this basket. Lo and behold, <laughs> she bloomed out. May I introduce to you my Tulumnia Red Devil. And yes, she is the Red Devil because of the remnants of the bloom that I had, which I did photograph back once upon a time. This is my Tulumnia Red Devil, the third go around. So I actually did a ninja clip specifically for her <laughs> because I was like, this is awkward. This is a bit embarrassing, but you know, if I do have a properly labeled Tulumnia out of my entire collection, then I have to have that documented. So that is my little story about my charming, darling, adorable, oh, loving this orchid, little Tulumnia red devil. So, so happy <laughs> for the third time that she is still alive. And very, very happy that Ana Mauro and Cara Lockwood, the names came up when she opened her spike. And for that reason, because of how all that fits together with my list, Ana Mauro and Cara Lockwood, my true Tulumnia Red Devil, she blooms for you. And the color is almost a match but the image that I managed to take right at the end, after the dedication that you will see a close up of her, that is her true color. And wow, she blows me away. Happy to have her and happy to dedicate her to you, Ana Mauro and Cara Lockwood. And thank you via my red devil for your support on my channel. How much more in your face can this bloom be without us getting the viewfinder straight into that lip? Oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how relieved I am that I got this orchid to bloom, considering the conditions that she was growing this growth under. And Brea Fisher, this orchid, this bud has been tagged with your name on it since I saw the sheath swell. And I'm very, very excited that I don't have to announce Bud Blast. Freya Fisher, Marincolalia Digbiana, she blooms for you. Massive thank you for your support on my channel, for your sweet, kind, and encouraging comments. Very motivating. I appreciate them so much. I hope that you are into somewhat green sherbet kind of colors and floofy lips because that is the attraction of the Digbiana. But not only that, her amazing fragrance at night. Oh my goodness, when the sun sets and it gets dark, all of a sudden the Digbiana not only is alive during the day because we can see her, but she comes alive at night. A gorgeous, gorgeous jasmine citrus fragrance. And it's strong enough to be able to appreciate it three meters away from where she lives. Not to forget that gorgeous, glaucous leaf effect in the background there. Everything about this orchid, I just love it. The reason I am so relieved as well is because my conditions have been so controversial for this orchid. She's a warm to hot grower. And yes, like me, I do not like anything below the temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. And while her bud was forming, that is exactly what we have had. Temperatures below 18 degrees Celsius, including during the day. Yuck! Besides that, she likes a lot of light. <laughs> something I have not been able to provide since the bud started forming. So forgive me for doing imaginary cartwheels around my patio, Brea. <laughs> I'm just so happy to see this bloom. So, Rincolalia Digbiana, Brea Fisher, thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. She blooms for you. Shh, 
don't tell him. <laughs> I decided to go to the backside. Excuse me, but we are now seeing Cousin It from behind. Because look at that bloom count. Oh my goodness. This guy, I cannot get enough of him. He has been in miserable conditions the past two weeks. But there's something I wanted to show you that, well, it just makes me laugh. Even though I don't like these conditions, he does. So this is what I've been visualizing Cousin It to be looking like every time I turn the corner on my patio. And with that being said, and with that being showed, thank you so very, very much for watching. I really appreciate your time, your support, and I really hope that you have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, that you do stay safe. Take care, bye. <laughs>